Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jennifer and today is going to be a short video. In fact, it'll be even shorter when I turn it into a reel or something like that where I just show the shades. What am I talking about? Lisa Eldred. These are the Lisa Eldred Velvet lipsticks and pencils where I have them. I don't have a pencil for every corresponding shade because strangely enough, I did not buy a pencil for every corresponding shade. Don't know why I did that. Um, I will be rectifying that the next order I do from Lisa Eldridge. So really quickly, let me explain what we're talking about today. These are the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Lipsticks. They are my favorite formula of a velvet. In fact, they're the only velvet that I love. There's others that I think are good. These are my OGs. I have 15 shades in front of me that I'm gonna lip swatch for you. Yeah, yeah, I know. 15 shades, they're not gonna be done all on the same day because my lips would kill me. Uh, so we're gonna start with the three newest ones that I picked up. I did not pick up all the new shades. I picked up three. So what I'm wearing right now is Rain. I'm going to put the liner on with it so you can see it. But I did not pick up Duchess or Pompadour. Correct, okay. Those are the two I did not pick up. So they will not be in this video. <laughs> So if you're just looking for those shades, I apologize, I did not get them. So this is Rain. Um, let me put on the lip liner. As far as I can tell, for every single one of the Lisa Eldridge shades, you do not need a lip liner with these. These are velvet, these are opaque, not gonna be an issue. Uh, but that is the shade. On my lips. Like I said, I'm gonna do every single shade. So let me explain what this shade looks like. You can see it on my lips. I'm gonna swatch it on the back of my hand and we're gonna describe it as we go through, uh, you can take a look. And like I said, the, the shorter one, the reels or whatever I make out of it will just be, the, just be the lip color. All right, it is a, this is how it's described. A rain soaked rose, this muted natural medium pink has a blend of warm and cool undertones as at its heart, uh, pick up the natural tones of the lip while enlivening the face. Um, saturated, highly pigmented lipstick with a beautiful, uh, true velvet effect on the surface of the bullet, which looks exactly like velvet fabric. Formulation is a creamy, hydrating matte with a slight sheen. It's not a flat matte. I'm not gonna describe the formula again as we move through this video. I think you can see though how it looks on the lips. If you have never seen a velvet by Lisa Eldridge before, this is what the velvet lipstick looks like. You can see that velvet nature of the bullet. This is what the packaging looks like. These are magnetic. So if you put them next to each other on your vanity, they are going to move away from each other because magnets, they, you can put them together, but they also detract. So you can't put them right next to one another unless you put them, watch what happens. So if I try to do this, they repel. <laughs> you can't, but if you do that, they'll work. But if you try to just put them equally like this because the magnet's right around here, that won't work. They will literally push each other apart if you put them on the vanity, just so you're aware. So if you try to put them just like straight down and you try to put them next to each other, they're not gonna, it's not gonna happen. So you have to make sure that there's, there's separation between each one. Uh, all right, so next we're gonna move on to a velvet enchantment and then we'll do sorcery. These are not easy to get off your lips. These are not all gonna be done in the same day, guys. <laughs> just so you know, I'll probably have different outfits on, my hair might be different, who knows, but these are hard to get off. They are, they are rich. Uh, for these first three shades, since they're new, I'll keep the swatches on my hand so you can see the differences between the three of them. This is Enchantment in the middle. And let's put it on the lips. There is Enchantment and Rain is next to it. I will put the liner on. To be very honest, for this formula, do I think you need a liner for each one of these? I don't. They don't bleed, at least on me. They don't bleed. My skin is very dry though, so that could have something to do with it. Um, but the liners do create a perfect line, whereas lipstick, you know, of course, it's not so precise. So if you like a perfect line, plus if you want it to stay longer, put the liner down first, put the lipstick over it. But I gotta tell you, the velvets, they last. Okay, so we're gonna describe the shade. It's in the middle. It is described as the beguiling and wild. 
Muted Red Matter Rose is a classic fairy tale and a lip color. Like a rush of blood to the lips, this instantly beautifying hue with its mix of cool and warm undertones is the most effortlessly wearable of all my reds. I would agree that this is a really easy red to wear. If you look at it on my hand, you notice it looks a little bit warmer next to the rain because the rain is a little bit pinker. This is more of a true red. On the lips, on me, it goes, I'd say pretty neutral and actually a little bit cooler because my skin tone and undertones are pinker and my lips tend to turn things a little bit pinker. So if you're looking at the difference between rain and enchantment, enchantment is a redder shade. Um, it has a little bit more neutrality, like I said, cool and warm, like the way this is described. Um, and rain has a little bit more pink. This is sorcery. You can tell very different than the other shades that I picked up. It is much browner. Um, you know, enchantment's definitely a muted red uh, and rain is, rain is, is the, is the, I think the trickiest one to actually describe because it's, um, it's literally a, a mix between cool and warm. It's very neutral, but it's pink. It's, it's as I described it, but I can't do any better than that. Um, okay. So Velvet Sorcery is sold out at the moment, but I'm sure she will bring it back. Um, the Bewitching Medium Dusky, Dusky, not Dusty, Dusky, uh, Clay Rose. Very good way to describe it. Uh, borrows a little cool toned mauve magic from the 90s. The indie it girl of the true velvets. I absolutely agree with her. It does remind me of the 90s, which is why I absolutely love the shade. I will tell you right now, the new ones I picked up, these three, this is my favorite. Is it a little deep on me? Yes. Uh, am I a little pale? Yes. But here's the thing, makeup is like whatever you want it to be. So maybe you like a very pale face and deep lip. Uh, that was pretty much everything I wore in the 90s. I gotta find some photos and show you guys how deep my lipsticks were. And I never wore bronzer because that didn't exist. I mean, not really. So yeah, this is a clay rose. That's a really way, a good way to, 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 to explain it. And it does absolutely remind me of the 90s. I recently did an Instagram post where I swatched it next to um, the new Suku holiday shades, 125 and the balm that's in there. They're both very similar shades. The balm is a balm, so it's a matte balm. It doesn't have nearly as much pigment. And 125 is basically the same color but it's more of a satiny, glossy lip, just so you know. Uh, so of the three, Sorcery is my favorite, but I have to say I love Enchantment. Rain is my least favorite of the new three, but it's still a really good color. And it's a pink that I can actually wear, which is saying a lot because I don't really wear um, pinks very often. So let me just put the liner on really fast. And for all of these so far in the, um, the liners, if you like the shade, but you think the opacity of the velvet, the thickness of the velvet is too much for you because it is too deep or too whatever, buy the liner. If you love the shade, buy the liner, put the liner on, put a gloss over it, like a clear gloss or a light pink gloss. You basically get the same look, but a little lighter. All right, with that, I'm gonna take a break. Could be a day, <laughs> could be an afternoon, who knows? So when I come back, I might look a little bit different, um, but I'll try to have on the same makeup so you can see the, uh, other, I have 12 more shades to go. All right, let's do some of the lighter shades. Let's start with, uh, let's start with Fawn. I don't have the liner for this, which is surprising to me. I would have thought I would, but I don't. I ignore the um, foundation over here. That's what I'm using in between each look. So that's Fawn. So this is Fawn. Described as a pretty and delicate beige cafe shade inspired by the classic heavy natural 90 shades in Lisa's vintage makeup collection with the addition of skin lifting, lively, cool, and warm undertones to make it extra flattering. This is a shade that I really love. I understand now why I don't have the liner. I don't have the liner because I wear this one with a chocolate liner because it, it, it can look a little gray, a little ashy um, because of the shades and it actually, if you're a little bit, uh, I think if you're like a light medium skin tone, this might just wash you out completely. Because I'm so pale, it's a little bit deeper than my skin tone, but I still like a chocolate liner with it. That's the thing. But it is a, a beautiful shade and great for every day. The liner I could use like as just a basic liner to use with other shades, so I should definitely pick it up. All right, the next I'm gonna do is Intrigue. This is Intrigue. 
I don't have a lip liner for this either. Can you, can you see though, like on my hand versus what it looks like on my lips? Because my hand is much lighter, frankly, than my lips and the pigment on my lips. So when you swatch the thing on your hand, you know, you'll get a certain look, you put it on your face, it can look very, very different. So anyway, that is Intrigue. And let me get the descriptor for that. Um, it says, with a softness of hue, this delivers warm, light peach rose, beige. Okay, wait a second. <laughs> with a softness of hue, this delicately warm, light peach rose beige gives a whisper light effect. Velvet Fawn, which I just used, with its cool beige pink attitude is inspired by the 1990s and this shade is inspired by the 1960s, albeit with a modern and wearable update, the lightest of all the true velvet shades. So as you can see, this shade almost blends completely into my skin. It does not wash me out, though, ever. however, because it's a warm peachy shade, it has a little bit of rose, a little bit of beige, but it doesn't have that same gray undertone or the little bit more of the you know browny grayish pink that the Fawn does. Uh, again, I wear this in a, with a deeper liner. Maybe that's why I never went out and got the liners for these because I felt like it would be too much on me. But again, I think if you're deeper skin toned, it would be more of a contrast. Whereas if you're a light skin tone, you might want to consider using a darker liner with it to get more contrast, or maybe you just like a monochromatic look. This is Affair. Now Affair, I do have a lip liner too, so we'll put that on in just a second. It is described as an earthy, soft caramel brown with easygoing cool girl vibes. Yeah, <laughs> that's not a bad, that's not a bad representation of the shade. Um, um, Affair is one of my favorite shades from Lisa Aldridge. I'm gonna say that a lot. But it's a good everyday shade for me because, because it has that caramel brown. You know, this works really well on me. It doesn't wash me out. It's enough shade, enough pigment to contrast with my skin. Again, if you were a medium skin tone, this might be the one that washes you out because it might be very similar to your skin tone. So I love the shade. It has just enough cool in it, so it's not too warm. Um, it's pretty much perfect. For me, it's like pretty much the perfect brown with a little bit of pink. And the Affair lip liner, great shade. Cause I mean, it's the same shade, so it's amazing. All right, let's do Muse. And there is Muse. So again, we have four shades that are very similar, right? Um, but they're not exactly the same. Um, you're gonna have the pinkiness, if you will, of Fawn. You're gonna have the a little bit warmer of um, Intrigue. Then you're gonna have the browner shade Affair, which is caramel. And now you have Muse, which is uh, described as a sensual smoky rosewood shade with the perfect mix of a pinky brown and dirty rose undertones to make the shade super wearable across a wide variety of skin tones. If this were a perfume, the top note would be rose, the heart, note wrote, uh, heart notes would be cedar and saffron, and the base notes would be musk and woods. Interestingly enough, this is probably the shade I use most, and you can also tell by the pencil, I need to sharpen it, but look, see how worn down it is? <laughs> uh, because I use Muse a lot. Muse is a perfect pinky brown. The, um, the Affair is a shade that I love because it's, I like the deeper brown, but Muse is like the perfect pinky brown. And honestly, it works really well with the new um, eyeshadow palette. It goes perfectly with the one name Muse. Now, as you can see, the shade is deep enough, not too gray, um, so it doesn't wash me out. It works on lots of folks. But if you have a medium or deeper skin tone, it's possible this one could wash you out because it has more of that pink, kind of like the um, Fawn. But I don't think so because I think this one is balanced enough that it would work. All right, so now I'm gonna to go to the sort of um, cool toned, deeper shades. So let's start with, let's start with blush. Now this is not blush lightly, this is blush. I have the blush lightly pencil, strangely enough, uh, but not the blush lightly lip. I don't own everything. I own a lot, but I don't own everything. All right, so this is blush. And blush is described as a deep pink berry inspired by the flush hues of Rococo artists, interesting, uh, Watteau, Fragonard, and Boucher. Boucher, I think it's Boucher. 
uh, a sensual boudoir shade with muted cool undertones. See, sometimes I can speak French. Uh, muted cool undertones. It doesn't get prettier or more feminine than this. From a flush lip, if applied as a stain, to a full berry pout. I will also admit, as the shades get deeper, the more I prefer having a liner with them because it's really hard to get super specific with a deeper shade. This is my opinion. Um, I absolutely love blush and it's surprising because it's definitely pinky berry shade, but it's so flattering. There's something about this shade. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Um, it look kind of, it has a little bit of a purple tone actually on me because it goes cooler. But I really like this when I'm doing a very simple, cool look. Like if you take like a rose gold shade and put it on the eye and just have this with it, the contrast is really very nice. Um, and because my skin actually is cool toned, it actually works on me. It, it's not a contrast. It contrasts my, it does contrast my hair, but it doesn't really contrast my skin. So I do, I do like blush. Okay, this is myth. When you look at the new Myth eyeshadow palette, it has a similar look to it. It's like a purpley, um, well, I'll describe it in a second, but like a purpley magenta kind of shade. It is deep and bright. And honestly, I never wear the shade. Uh, it's described as a wildly vivid mulberry, mulberry shade, inspired by a vintage kimono Lisa bought oh, on her first trip to Japan. The shade has notes of red and blue and particularly good for brightening the face and whitening the teeth. It does whiten the teeth. I never wear the shade because it's just too much for me. I don't, I feel like it's too much. <laughs> um, it's funny because blush I will wear and um, myth I will not. And I think it's because blush, if you look at it, it is more subdued. It has more of that rosewood. Whereas myth is just more just like out there mulberry. Um, I think this would look fantastic on on a lot of people. If you're very pale like I am, you can wear it. If you're deeper skinned, absolutely you can wear it. I just think it's a lot for me, but there's plenty of people out there that wear a deep lip. I just don't often wear a deep lip, frankly, ever. And if I do do a, a deep lip, it's gonna be a red. It's gonna be like either a cool tune red, like neutral-ish kind of red, or it's gonna be something like a brick um, that goes with my hair color. But this shade, I just, um, I just don't wear it. And honestly, guys, if I didn't have a channel, I wouldn't have picked um, some of these up because I did it for, you know, comparisons, that kind of thing. All right, um, so the next one is one of my, again, let's say this a million times, um, one of my favorite shades, but I don't have a liner for it, which is interesting, because I love the shade, and actually it would probably be a good liner. This is Jazz. I tried to be careful with it, <laughs> because I don't have a liner for it, and it is a very deep red shade. It is beautiful, and I, like I said, I really like the shade. I don't know why I didn't pick up the liner for this, because this is actually one that I do wear, not very often, and in the winter. But a muted, earthy brick red, that's probably why I like it, uh, inspired by the 1930s red lipsticks in her vintage collection. That makes a lot of sense, because it does have that you know vintage red kind of shade. I think it's a little cooler a little cooler than a neutral red, um, like a Marilyn Monroe red. I think this is a little bit more bluish red, um, but I do think it's a beautiful shade. It's a very, very deep red. Um, it does whiten the teeth. Uh, and I'd say, I think a lot of people can wear jazz. In fact, I've seen a lot of people wear jazz. Um, one of the, I think the most popular shades that's posted is jazz. And again, because of the formula, it stays on all day, so it's relatively safe. It is not transfer proof. The, the, the velvets, if you have never used a velvet from uh, Lisa Eldridge, they're not transfer proof. So you will get this everywhere, like on your white shirt. That's what I do. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay on a really long time, and it's going to stain. So it leaves behind a beautiful shade. Um, in fact, it's hard to get off. So after I do these cool toned, uh, deeper shades, I'm going to like wash, wash my face before we move to the to the warm, warm tone, deeper shades. Okay, so this is Decade, and this one's deep. I'll be honest, I don't think I've, I've worn this other than on the channel. Like, other to show you guys, I don't think I've worn this shade. Um, lots of gray, I gotta get my hair, <laughs> I gotta get that touched up. Uh, yeah, Decade is very, very deep. It's not like you can't wear it if you're pale. Uh, it's just that it's gonna be a huge contrast because it's a very deep shade. 
Um, a divinely decadent burnt chocolate shade. Great description. Uh, is lifted and made very wearable by the blue and lively red undertones, which stop it from being a flat brown. Agree, it's not a flat brown. The color is absolutely gorgeous as a light patterned uh, padded stain. Perfectly your lips, but better shade with an ex extra oomph. Uh, full coverage is the most decadent and glamorously modern vintage shade uh, and inspired by hand tinted sepia fashion portraits. I agree with this. This is not a flat matte, uh, a flat brown. If this was just brown, it would look terrible on me. And it doesn't, it just looks very deep. What I would tell you though, is the way I would wear this if I was going to wear the shade um, would be to just pat it into my lips. Because I feel like when I just swipe it on, it's just too, it's too much um, next to my, my skin tone. Now again, you know, that's a matter of preference. Um, but to me, it's just a little too deep for my skin tone if I just use it as a full opaque lipstick. If I pat it in, I think it's perfect. Uh, all right, so the last four shades are gonna be the warm toned deeper shades. Let's start with Velvet Morning. Okay, this sh shade's very bright. It almost looks like I took like a, a highlighter and put it on my face. Uh, a hot and fiery bright orange red inspired by waking up in a tropical place and seeing orange red sky on the horizon. I also love the Nancy Nasser song, Some Velvet Morning. This is an ultimate pick me up shade. This is incredibly bright. Now, I don't wear the shade because it's just not me. It's not my personality. It's not who I am. However, I absolutely see this as like you're in a tropical vacation. You're on a beach somewhere. You're tan and bronze and gorgeous and you put this on and it's perfect. I have never been tan, bronze and perfect and <laughs> stunning in my entire life. I've been to tropical uh, locations, but I, I never looked tan or bronze or any of those things. So I just think it's too much with my pale, uh, non uh, <laughs> pink undertones. I don't look tan. I don't look like I'm at a beach. Um, and I think it's just too much for my contrast, you know, for my hair and it's too contrasting. However, I think absolutely if I was going somewhere it was really tropical vibe and I wanted to be like just a bright lipstick. Um, but what I would do is I would obviously wear a very different look on my eyes and I would pat it in. I don't think I would use it as a full lip swatch. Last three I have um, liners for. So this one is going to be Dragon. Here is Dragon. And now that we're getting into the winter months or we're about to hit winter in about a month actually, we're still in fall even though it feels like winter, I will definitely be wearing more of these, the lip liners and the lipsticks. I tend not to use the lip liners um, as much I use them in the fall and the winter. It's funny because the lip liners, <laughs> I could use them in the spring and summer too. I just use like so much less makeup in the summer. Um, if you haven't watched my channel before, I hate the heat. So I just, I just don't. <laughs> I don't, I just, I wear as little as I possibly can. Um, so again, dragon, uh, a burnt soft rusty red with warm yellow undertones. Inspiration for the shade comes in the form of ancient shiny ceramics and the pigments used for lacquering uh, pottery ornaments and jewelry for thousands of years. I just love this shade. I understand it has a little bit more like of a yellow undertone and it does mix with my undertones of my skin, but I feel like my hair allows it to kind of work. Um, and I do tend to use a chocolate brown liner with this one to maybe make it a little bit more brown. I tend not to use the, the matching liner, although I use the liner and then use like a gloss a lot of the time. So anyway, I love the dragon shade. I think it works for a lot of folks. If you're really dead set against anything that has any yellow undertone or you feel like a yellow undertone really is like bad for you, don't, don't use the dragon. Okay, we're coming into the home stretch and you know, it's interesting. I pulled this one into the um, cool, the warmer tone, but actually this one is, I would have said this one actually would go better with the cool. So we're just gonna have to deal with it guys. Cause I, <laughs> I didn't think about it, but I don't know why I put this with, anyway, this is Ribbon. <laughs> ribbon is definitely more of a blue red. It would have gone better with the, the cool tone shades, so I'm sorry, but you'll get to see a little bit of contrast. You can see though, like next to the orangey shades, how much cooler it is. When you're lip swatching 15 shades, you're bound to get one wrong. Uh, so this is Ribbon. 
and Ribbon is a vibrant, universal, classic, neutral blue red. This is the one classic pillar box red that every woman needs. I named it Velvet Ribbon because when I think of this shade, I always think of a velvet bow. And I agree, it's very much a blue classic red. You can see how you get your teeth look whiter. I've been drinking a lot of tea today, so actually, <laughs> they, it looks pretty good. Um, and you can now really see it uh, next to these warmer shades, how blue red it is. If I put it with the other um, cooler shades, like Jazz, for instance, I put it next to Jazz and put Jazz like right on top of it. You'll see, see how Jazz actually looks more purple and how like bluish red this looks. So if you put um, ribbon next to Jazz, it actually looks warmer. And maybe that's why I was thinking that in my head. I don't know, weird, but it is, it's a blue red, absolutely. Um, but it is warmer than like Jazz is, it's warmer than Jazz is and it's warmer than, like it's not a magenta or mulberry or purple. It's a true blue red, but it tends to go kind of neutral on a lot of folks. On me, I think it does go a little cooler because everything does, but it's a really good red. It's a red that I think most people could wear because of its almost neutral blue leaning. Blue leaning reds tend to look better because they make your teeth look whiter and that they tend to work. Um, if you're very, very golden olive, maybe the, the bluish shade of this wouldn't work. Um, and then the next shade would be a color that you would prefer. But I think ribbon is, is a beautiful shade. And the last but not least, Cinnabar. One of my favorite shades by Lisa Eldridge. <laughs> this is Cinnabar. Cinnabar really is one of my favorites because I think it's kind of a representation of my hair color. I mean, it's pretty freaking close. Uh, Cinnabar, is, uh, Cinnabar is described as inspired by the, the dense poisonous red, good, the dense poisonous red mineral, which has been used precious resource around the world since at least the 10th millennium BC during ancient rituals and rites of passage. Rites of passage. It came to denote blood, victory, success, and even immortality. In various forms, including vermilion, it has been used as an artist pigment and can be seen in the frescoes of ancient Rome. It was also used extensively as a cosmetic, most famously by Queen Elizabeth, uh, Queen Elizabeth I, to create an intensely dramatic and powerful effect on the lips and cheeks, because it's a powerful shade. And that is Cinnabar. Cinnabar, um, yes, it is. it has a reddish tone, but it's, it's that, it has a little bit of what I would say like clay, um, mineral, like a clayish kind of um, rustic kind of shade. Uh, it, it similar to my hair. I really, really like this one. Um, she describes it as the deepest, richest, most powerful burnt okra, warm brown, red imaginable. And I, I think she nails it with that description. Um, it's just, I mean, it's a stunning, stunning shade. If you like a fair and fawn, if you like a fair, you'll probably like um, Cinnabar. It's deeper though, it's a much deeper shade. And this is one of my favorites for a more dramatic look that's not red, and you can see why. And if you don't like ribbon, because it's a very blue red, and you don't like jazz because it's a purpley red, this is Cinnabar, which is very much a burnt okra warm brown red, and I, or brick red, and <laughs> I love this shade. Um, this is not a shade that's gonna make your teeth look as white. Generally, it's the blue reds that do that, but it's not like it makes them look yellow. Um, so I just think it's a, a stunning shade. And you can see though, next to uh, ribbon, how, how cool ribbon looks next to it. Um, whereas, you know, if you get into like dragon, dragon looks much more orange next to it. So this is, you know, a combination of, of an orangey and a cool. It's not super warm like the dragon is. It's, it's got some coolness to it. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful shade. Um, and again, these are my preferences about what I wear and what I like but I put them all on my lips today and swatched them on the back of my hand in you know, comparison to other ones so you can figure out of the 15 that I have, which you'd like to pick up. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, like I said, I'm gonna shorten it down to just show each shade and have like a reel or something so everybody can just see it very quickly. Um, but this is meant to be kind of like a compendium so you can go back uh, when you're ordering your Lisa Eldridge shades or you're buying new shades or whatever to compare them to others and figure out which ones you want to get. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye.